All right, friends, your two week wait is finally over. I am Ash. I am Elle. We are Lavi Cosplay. This is Shit Cosplayers Say, and we are back with Ginoza costuming for the second half of our episodes on points in a cosplay contest. Woo! Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. Thanks for, for sticking with us for the second half of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You know what? I could talk about this type of stuff for days. Four days. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so the one thing that we see constantly asked on forums that we've gotten messages about is how do you get extra points in a contest or this concept of there being extra points that exist, that there are like certain things that will give you <laughs> points above the points you can already get. I don't really know if that's necessarily a thing because if you do all the things that you were supposed to do in the one through 10 aspects of everything else, there's nothing else you could really do. So maybe they don't mean it in that way. Maybe they mean like, how do I get to that 10, that 10 out of 10, maybe. So it is sometimes that's what they actually mean by asking about extra points. You know, how can I elevate my costume? But the experience with the less experienced crowd is that they think that by like trying to do a really complicated technique, that's going to give them like more points, but they haven't learned how to do basic finishing yet. Yes. So you, you kind of end up with this imbalance when this extra points concept is happening, because typically with contests, you're gaining points, not losing them. Like you don't start with a hundred points and then lose points as you go. Like, nope, you're starting with zero and you're gaining from zero. Right. So they're trying to figure out, it's almost like extra credit. I think is a better way to think about it. Like how you, like if you didn't do well on a test, but if you did certain things, you could get extra credit. It's almost like that concept. Yeah, but that doesn't make sense because if you want to actually get what is considered the extra (laughs) points, you do the things that are in the initial, (laughs) like the, the, the accuracy, (laughs) the finishing, the, uh, what else is on the rubric? I don't even know, (laughs) but you have to do those not try to strive for, oh, I did 3D printing and you could see the 3D print lines, but I did 3D printing, you know? That's it exactly. So sometimes they're thinking if they do certain techniques that that's going to get them extra points or more credit, even if it's not done well. No, the only thing that matters is that it it is finished well, finished well. What I call it is mastery of mastery of skill. Well, and in our experience, this does typically come from lack of experience. So it's that concern of a costume not being enough, not being fancy enough to win. Well, if we're talking about winning versus being a beginner, that's kind of like a different perspective to look at it from. Because when you're a beginner, you can't really expect to win anything yet because you're still starting out. You're not at the top of your game when you're just starting. But if they want to learn how to get better, you say like, finishing needs to be better. What else is on a rubric? I don't have it in front of me. Right? <laughs> I don't it's, know. Finishing so is so important. <laughs> there are definitely a lot of new cosplayers that think if they do X, Y, Z, they can win the whole thing. Like that, uh, that no. is, that is a thing. Um, it's like a secret math problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like if out. I do this perfect equation, I will win regardless of my like level of experience. Yeah. And the perfect equation is perfect costume. So <laughs> like, that's the only way. <laughs> so a lot of times what happens, that way. like it's almost a lost in translation between the technique and the execution of it. So yeah. like by just doing this technique, it will be more impressive or like, no. um, you see this a lot. People will pattern their own things because they think that's going to give them more credit, but then it doesn't fit. Uh, it's got to fit. It's It's got to fit. Sometimes I'll use patterns like much anymore. I don't because I freaking always end up needing something specific, but like, I just, I just made a costume where I needed to buy some historical patterns to make things a lot easier. And yeah, I ended up editing them, but like you need your costume to look good. If, if, if you don't have the basics of like, it doesn't even look good, then there's almost no point in the fact that you did your own pattern like it just doesn't matter unless it looks good if it looks good then that's extra then that's great then that that's a great extra thing that you did but you have to get 
the first thing first. If it's going to look good with a pattern and look good with you doing your own pattern, doing your own pattern does matter. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah it does. But, on, but only if the execution <laughs> is going to be the same in the end. Right. Yes. Or so better. Like, I or think better. there's a, a misconception of what's expected from a novice sometimes. And they think that well, since the masters make their own patterns, I need to make my own pattern and it's not executed well. And then they don't get as many points. Yeah. And so there's um, a little bit of a disconnect between what they see wins entire contests and their own ability levels. Yeah. There's almost different scoring almost, almost when it comes to judging a novice versus like a master. When you're a novice, you're still you're still starting out. Like, I, I can't stress that enough. Like you can't judge yourself from the perspective of a, a master yet. You have, you have to like kind of do your due diligence in a way. Like you have to start with learning how to make costumes clean, learning how to sew hems, learning how to make your foam not have fuzzies all over it, learning how to paint that thing correctly. You know, you have to do those things before you can get to the expert position. So it, you kind it's, it's an experience thing. You kind of just got to get yourself through it before you go straight to master. People don't typically do that. And there's a reason for it. <laughs> and it's because that the people who are at master have done their due diligence. So. Well, and that's what we find gets missed is, you know, they're so excited to do all these fancy things and do these big mm -hmm. elaborate costumes. Which is great. But we, we haven't learned the basics in construction. Yes, but it, it's great that they want to like go crazy and do crazy big things and stuff, but they can't expect that they're going to do the same as a master if they haven't learned the basics yet. So yeah, you want to do whatever costume you want to do. That's great. That's I power to you for being able to take on something so ambitious, but you're not going to get judged the same if you haven't gotten that experience yet. And, and some will listen and some won't, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and some people don't want to get better either. They True. just want to make their thing, which is absolutely fine. But it, yeah. I think we're talking mostly about the people who have a problem with not placing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This, and this... it's because you have to do all of those things. You have to get your experience first. Yeah. Yeah. There's no shortcuts around getting practical experience and how to do something well, or spending what... the time on it even. That's what it is. In some cases, they're looking for the shortcut to the win. Like, yeah. And it's not usually a shortcut. Not usually. Cause it's sometimes like, you'll get some wonky contests that'll judge you for being Chewbacca and then you're Chewbacca and people don't care because you're Chewbacca and you win anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not salty about it. Stop asking. <laughs> so sometimes that's going to happen, but that's personally not my contest. If you care about craftsmanship, if you care about making a nice costume, your costume contest is not the one that makes Chewbacca win because they're Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> it, we get it that it takes a lot of patience to have to start simple and learn the techniques first before you can yeah. move forward to these really elaborate pieces. And we've made this mistake too. I mean, <laughs> over intuition. <laughs> When, <laughs> when we came back to competing in 2015, we made this massive mistake of picking something way above where we were at because we took too much time off. Came back to slap us in the face and we can't look at those costumes anymore. It worked Aww, out. But, but like, it worked <laughs> out. But then we took steps back and we're like, nope, we need to go over this. We need <laughs> this to is unhealthy. This. <laughs> this is not, this is not going to work long-term. We tried to do the whole flashy thing, but- yeah then we neglected a lot of the construction because flashy, flashy sparkle. <laughs> yeah. flashy, I mean, flash. I think we all have costumes that we put down because something got a little bit too hard. And that's something that I think novices need to hear is that even people, like we've all been in that position. We've all, we've all been there already. I think all cosplayers go through a point where they have to put down a costume that was just a little bit too hard for them at the time. You know, and you may never pick that one back up, but <laughs> it's okay because we kind of all go through this. 
Well, and it's, it's still something you learn from. And I think being yes. able to I- identify that for yourself and being like, Ooh, maybe I need to take a step back from this instead of just trying to like plow right through it. I think that's a really like healthy attitude to have mm-hmm. and it's it'll great. be just better for you in the long run. Yeah. Like sometimes you can plow right through a problem and I do that all the time, but you kind of have to know when something's a little bit too over your head. Yeah. It's, it's not a failure if you recognize that it's time to stop. I agree. Like that's a sign of experience and maturity, maturity and understanding yeah. that this is more than I anticipated and it is not going to be done when I thought it was going to be done. Slash Nine. it's not going to be as good <laughs> if you decided to uh, kind of smash right through it. Yeah. I mean, I literally just did this with, Mistress Nine, who should have been super easy, but something went wrong, as we covered in our update from a few weeks ago. Um, and I stopped because I'm like, nope, we need to stop and figure out and go back and check some of these basic skills before I do this next step so that overall it ends up being a well made costume and not, I threw it together because the con is in like a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, I think the exact same thing, like we said, was it. It can be said about con crunching as well. You have to kind of know when to throw in the towel. We're getting better. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely 100%. getting better. As, as you're painting right now. <laughs> no, you know what? I might throw in the towel on this one, but you know what? I figured if, even if I don't get it done by the convention, I will have gotten that much closer to getting the costume done. Yeah. So I can still be proud of myself if I don't have it done to a hundred percent before the convention that that's the way I've been thinking about the last two or three cons I went to because you know I put stuff off even though I had friggin year and a half to do whatever the (laughs) hell I wanted yep but you know I didn't (laughs) so uh everything got put off and I definitely didn't have costumes ready for things at the end of the year last year and this might end up being the same thing too but I think there's a little less anticipation too right now with uh COVID things yeah. Like for having, having to have that costume done by this convention, that's made me get kind of better at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a little more relaxed. People are a little bit more understanding because that's a large chunk as to why like our stuff didn't get done is both our jobs are very heavily affected by COVID. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, if things change and then it's like, well, I don't have time for this now because I have to do this, 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 and this. I mean, yeah, it is what it, it is. happens. But yeah, I don't want to ruin my sixteen dollar yard fabric, so I stopped. Oh my gosh, I want to talk about fabric after this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's too pretty to ruin. So, oh my gosh, okay, I'm just gonna bring it up really just quick. Do it. I just do bought it. this. I just okay. So I'm making Naja from what we do in the shadows. Yes, please. I I'm, love her. I'm so excited, and uh, of course, I couldn't not buy the exact fabrics that I wanted because I'm stupid. <sighs> And I added this freaking fabric to my cart on Etsy and saw that it was $165 for five yards. Yeah, I know. I have that face too. (laughs) (laughs) Guess who ended up buying it anyway? (laughs) No. I was like, I don't need to eat. I can just eat with this fabric next to me. It's fine. (laughs) So I ended up buying it and it's like the most stunning black textured fabric ever. And I lined it with like a heavy cotton and it's like... (laughs) Oh, it feels, it feels like rich people clothes. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's so good and heavy and it feels so good. And okay. So sometimes you need to spend a little bit extra money on your fabric. If you want to be happy on the inside. I did that um, for our international set. I bought silk velvet and just touching it makes me really happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that it's like that so yeah. if you guys get to see me anytime soon and I am wearing that costume I want to have you touch my skirt I can't you can tell me exactly why and you can look at my cool linings too because I put a bunch of funny linings in well it. I was going to warn you that we're probably going to want to touch the dress so because oh, that's, that's totally I'm a texture junkie anyway <laughs> yeah <laughs> I went to school for t- and textiles was totally part of my classes and for fashion gonna, like, so I can't wait like with your fingers just oh I love this <laughs> yes <laughs> I do love me some texture in a costume. Yes. I, like. And it's really hard to find a black texture fabric. Okay. That's the last thing I'm going to say about it. <laughs> it. It's true. That's why my black 
burnout velvet was sixteen dollars a yard, which yeah, sounds like so nothing next stupid, to one hundred and sixty something. But <laughs> stupid black velvet or stupid black fabrics are dumb. So whatever. Well, and I could totally bring this back around to the topic we were talking about right? and the fact that these super fancy, amazing fabrics, if you can purchase them and you can afford to do it, work smart, not hard. Don't try to make the crazy fabric on your own if that's not something you're skilled in. <laughs> you know, buy that ombre, <laughs> buy that specialty embroidery fabric. I would yeah. not have to do everything from scratch. That is one of the things you'll see, like the couple of things you see most common in the name of like these extra points is trying to do 3D printing, do, trying to do your own pattern, trying to do your own fabric dyeing. I see Those a lot of people succeed common. in fabric dyeing though, I feel like. That's a good one to start with. It's, it's not as complicated as like embroidery or, you know, 3d modeling or something. Yeah. Tell other. me that I freaking hate fabric dyeing. I lose at it every, it's a losing game. It's a losing song game for me every single time. <laughs> and it just makes me angry. And I see people, I have some friends who can do perfect freaking ombres and I'm like, screw you, screw you and your amazing <laughs> ability to do that thing that you're doing right now. <laughs> I was watching that a lot of people are doing um, ombre with an airbrush now, and I feel much more comfortable with that. So I may try that. I, like I could point. do that. I could handle that, but I don't know if I could do an ombre, like a full ombre on like a gigantic skirt, like with True. a freaking airbrush. It's not happening. It's much easier to do that with a pot, honestly, um, to yeah. get that even. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm afraid of fabric dyeing. I'll be honest. Oh I man, really me too. Ombre. I hate it. Um, I have a really weird ombre I need to do. And part of me just wants to cheat and spoon flower it. <laughs> you Dude, made the yes, design. I have that feeling exactly. You- I know. But if I design it on by myself and Corel paint shop and then upload it and then purchase the fabric, I hey, did that's technically do it. <laughs> I did technically do it. <laughs> That counts. That's kind, I'm, it's kind of true. I'm okay with that. That's better than when I used to like have to paint literally everything. Me who literally paints everything. <laughs> I'm totally ready to get on the spoon flower train. Right? Dude, I'm down with the spoon flower train. I was about to order some stuff from spoon flower. Like I had to, for my next big costume, I, I decided to paint on my, te- I've got like a, I've got procreate, if you know what that is, uh, mm-hmm. on my iPad and I painted this fabric like non-repeating like painted this fabric flower design over this entire thing because I wanted it to be exactly like the reference I was like this will be just like the reference and I'm gonna have to get that spoon flowered and I am so pumped on it love it I'll have to send you a picture because it is freaking crazy (laughs) work smart use what you have to your advantage yes I think that's one of the hard things too, is like for a lot, especially a lot of new cosplayers is the hard way isn't necessarily the best way. Like you need yeah, to do what you can do best. Although it still cracks me up how many people come in where, as we've said before, it looks like an antique store threw up on them where it's covered <laughs> in rhinestones and embroidery and beads, but it doesn't make sense for the character. Um, yeah, yeah. That's, I a, that's a frequent occurrence at anime conventions. Where you're like, yeah, I feel like I've been to a lot less anime conventions in the last couple of years. So I, I get what you mean from what I have seen, but it's been a hot minute since I've been to a lot of anime conventions. <laughs> yeah, well, I, did I just say two years? Of course it's been two years because we haven't had any freaking <laughs> conventions the last two years. That makes sense. <laughs> but it's one of those where it's like, you're going to pick something, at least make sure it makes sense with your design. Because if your character is supposed to be like poor and, you know not doing so well but you just covered their outfit in rhinestones it's gonna be very confusing yeah. so. yes well I, I have like two that I'm that are on my like soon to make agenda and one of them mm-hmm. is essentially homeless and the other one is a king and it's like royalty homeless person these are going to be two drastically different costumes but they're the very same much. person oh. but they're the same person <laughs> but that's besides the point and but you want the- Wear one right underneath the other, yeah? <laughs> yes, that's actually what's happening. That is actually what's happening. <laughs> See, I guessed it. I'm good at guessing. Yeah. <laughs> For our our um ICL competition stuff. Oh, so. nice, nice, nice. Yes. 
it is funny though because they're complete polar opposites they are and the techniques and the finishings on them are going to be drastically different i like to make the joke i'm going to run over one of them with my car (laughs) ultimate distressing i could throw it in the the lake outside you could i mean extra dirty that way dragging things behind your car is supposed to be a really good way to uh to weather i don't see why not right yeah that's I mean that's the way I've seen like you get a rope or something and then you tie it to the, like we'll just say it's a jacket and you put like so, like a basketball inside the jacket and kind of tie it up and then you run that like over the ground and I it like see that does the job really well I, I've I'm in a, a lot of like post-apocalyptic groups so that's one of the things I like there it you go Ash that's how you can uh <laughs> wear that costume down <laughs> <laughs> Great. See what it can tolerate and rub a little dirt on it in the places that need oh, some right. more. Well, oh like, yeah. So that's a whole nother subject. We don't have to get into weathering right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> I love me some weathering, so we better not start because that's one yeah, of my favorite not, things to do. So. Of, like, you mean we don't need another yeah. tangent? <laughs> we don't. We don't need a tangent there. That tangent won't stop because that's no, legit can, my no. favorite thing to do. We so. we won't because like I I like to attend Wastelands Weekend like out in the desert. Mm. I don't know if you know what that is, but no, it's. Uh, post-apocalyptic uh event it all happens in california in the desert and it's like mad max themed and everything is themed so it's like a convention but everybody has to be in cosplay <gasps> that's so cool it's <laughs> so is it amazing. more con like or is it more like larp like it's more larp like okay but people are cool and also people don't use money there for the most part fun um it's mostly trading which is awesome oh, that is it's- awesome <laughs> Freaking dope. I've only, I've only been once, but I really, really want to go again next year. I was going to go the COVID year, but you know, yeah, COVID, you know. COVID year. But anyway, they, I learned a lot of like little things about how to like weather and stuff like from doing that. So all I heard right there was that if we decide to do an episode specifically on weathering, we need to invite Brittany back. Apparently I can, I could probably help. I mean, I wouldn't be the only one who would be good for that, but I could help. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It is, it is one of my favorite pastimes for costumes is to distress and weather and it's fun. It's good times. Mm-hmm. I enjoy for sure. it. But I mean, I also love me some rhinestones if, I mean, I have a tendency to put them on everything. everything. I do love, I like myself a little sparkle, but yeah, I, I have don't... a tendency to paint everything. So I, I get, yeah. I get the, uh, the wanting to do the certain finishings. So, so it's really just, you need to find a balance because you yes. don't want it to, unless, unless there's certain gowns, you do want it to look like a rhinestone store, like a rhinestone store threw up on it. But like, <laughs> you know, there are cases where yes, that's what you want. <laughs> you don't want your, your little details to take over your entire costume. So Yes. This can be more. They should sometimes. add to the costume, not distract from everything yes. else. There is a, a point where you've added too many, but there are also points where you haven't. So, I mean, that's kind of a fine line to walk. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You just, if it visually makes sense aesthetically, like you're yeah. probably on the right track. There are things that people think affect their scores that really don't, which is typically a big concern because they're really common things like how much money you spent on your costume. Oh yeah. I don't care whether or not you're wearing contact lenses. Don't yeah. Care. That doesn't matter to me. No. In some cases, like it's okay if you didn't make your shoes. Like, Oh yeah. You know, you didn't make I, your high heels that you need for this costume or like your underwear. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need, you don't need to have made your, I want to say undergarments, but that's not true because a lot of people do like historical undergarments. That's different. Yeah. But like they don't want you don't need to make your underoos and you don't need to make you don't have to necessarily have made your basics. Like if you have, for instance, a tank top and leggings on underneath your entire big costume, like no, don't don't worry about that. Like come on. Well, <laughs> and, and, especially- and shoes you don't always have needed to make either. Well, and especially in the lower classes, like if you're a novice, I don't necessarily expect you to have made a super fancy like hoop skirt with petticoats. Just don't talk Mm -hmm. about it. Just say, I didn't make that and move on. Like, Oh yeah. That's a big thing. You're not gonna, we're only judging you on what you did make. So what you didn't make doesn't matter. Yeah. Unless somebody else has the exact same costume and the exact same quality. And they also happen to make that one thing. It doesn't matter. Yeah. 
you know, to what you said, definitely, if you're being judged, do not bring up the negatives of your costume. I will do that sometimes when I'm in the judging room, because all I see is the flaws. All we see is our flaws. We have, you have to bring up only the positives, only the things that you made, um, the things that took a little bit longer for you, the things that were a little bit more complicated in process, because like I said before, um, judges will generally know how you made things. They just want you to explain it to them. They want you to prove to them that you made it. Speaking of which, we don't t- like dock you for being nervous in the judging. Yeah. Room. People it's- are so nervous all the time. It's like, it's whatever. We'll give you that time to like be nervous. It's, it's yeah, totally yeah. okay. It's okay. I get nervous still. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, and it's okay if you struggled with something like I like seeing yeah. when people can overcome and push through things and, you know, tell us what they learned from a certain challenge that they had. Yeah. Tell, tell the judges what the most complicated or what was the most difficult thing for you? What thing were you able to, um, sort out that was like very hard, you know, though I will say if you're doing something for the first time, like I made these pants, they're the first pants I've ever made. They're, it is the first time judges don't care. No, no. I've heard it on multiple occasions from all judges. They don't care if it's the first time you've done it. So if you've made a pair of pants that are, you know, five out of 10, an eight out of 10, whatever, honestly, they don't care if it's the first time you've done it, that you've done it. They just want to know that you did it. And depending on how long your judging appointment is, you talking about those pants and how long it took you to make them, or if it was the first time you made it might take away time that you could be talking about something else. Talk about the things that you're proud of too. Go ahead. It's it's kind of the thing where um, a lot of people like to mention how much or how little time they spent as well. Um, mm. And I really don't care. Um, I care what it looks like. For some reason, so. though, people really like it to be included in like their MC intros. They do. And I don't They know really, why. really like it. This person <laughs> took 18,000 months to make this. And it's a really, <laughs> well, it's an easy filler to put inside your MC intro. It's. But the it's, judges don't necessarily care. No. It's impressive to the audience that doesn't make things. If you spent a thousand hours on this dress, that's impressive to the audience. Only if it looks like a thousand hours to right. us. <laughs> if, if you put 10,000 rhinestones on your costume, that's impressive to the audience. They hear these numbers and they're like, woo, shiny. As a judge who has also put 10,000 rhinestones on a costume, I don't care. <laughs> you put 10,000 <laughs> rhinestones on your costume. Do they make sense? Awesome. Now I care. Though I would probably include that in my build book. Like if this is the rhinestone section, you can put 10,000 rhinestones. But if you're just, if, if, yeah, it's a fun fact more than a like deciding factor or anything like that. Absolutely. Cause I mean, people ask me about that with Harley all the time. They're like, how many are on there? And I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) 10,000. An obscene amount. That's how much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like 10,000. Big deal. It's fine. You know, it's fine. This is fine. I mean, it wasn't hard. It was just tedious. Like, yes, (laughs) it's not an advanced skill to put rhinestones on. It's just tedious. Now, in the case of a contest that has performance or stage presentation included, it can be kind of like a decision breaker, but only if it's good, because if it's not, it's going to hurt you. So if you cannot do a performance well, do not do one. (laughs) I know a lot of people feel like that's like the extra mile they need to go in a contest sometimes, but if you're not going to do it well, what we're going to remember is the performance that wasn't good, not your costume. Yeah, because you can literally lose your placement from a bad walk, which I will say almost never happens for my type of work. Mm -hmm. It almost never happens. I can remember... Not even times that I judged, but I can remember specific times when stage walks did not go well. And I was like, that absolutely affected their score. Like I've seen people multiple times break down on stage with their gigantic costume. And you know, you know that they place lower because of that. But that's literally the only time. When you look a little nervous, we're not really going to care. You just really have to get across the stage. (laughs) Hopefully you were able to show up your costume during that time. Really, the only time it affects anything if you're just doing the stage walk is if something catastrophic happens. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or if you did an amazing stage walk is the only time it matters. So like I have this one friend, Casey Renee Cosplay. She's amazing. Um, She is is honestly like a super 
amazing as stage walker. Like, I don't know how she, she's like, she likes acting and stuff. She's just like so good at stage walks. Every single time I see her do one, I'm like, it looks like she's done this 50,000 times. She's so confident. She knows how to show off every single part of her costume. She never trips, nothing. So like those kind of things can make a difference if you are amazing. But like, other than that, get across the stage, show us your costume, don't fall. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> nothing falls off. You're probably and, good. And even if a button falls off, that's not really gonna, that's not really gonna affect anything. That's like if your entire costume breaks down. <laughs> we've used it before as tiebreakers. Yes. So yeah. if we have two people who are seriously close in craftsmanship and we need something to break that, we've used either walk on or performance, depending on what they're doing, you know, depending on how the contest is structured, if that performance element is rolled into the craftsmanship or if it's separate or, or how they're doing it. But this is a good thing to keep in mind because I know that um, a lot of you are panicking right now because crown has a performance option. You do not need to do it. So only do it if it's going to be done really well. Otherwise, don't do a skit. But what if you want to win? That's what I want to know. So far, the people who have won have not done performances. Um, but it'll probably matter when it comes down to the big one. We, we've it heard might. from some of our European friends that they also don't like doing performances. So. Oh, well, that's good because yeah. usually they're the ones that love that. <laughs> so the contest is starting to move away from that. So I think good. the MCM is going to be just kind of a new beast this year since mm-hmm. they're getting rid of Euro cosplay and just throwing it all together into one. So okay. I'm curious to see what happens with that. But yeah. like Elle said, all the U.S. finalists, at least so far, have been just walk-ons. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good to know. And there's been very, very few to no performances at oh, all okay. of the that's- preliminaries thus far. That's just because it's confusing and people and we don't know what to do. <laughs> it's confusing and it's heavily restricted. Heavily. Oh, because yeah, yeah. Because you have to make have your own material. Same, yeah, they have all the same rules as like a lot of the masquerades and like other places because you can't use copyrighted, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, if if you are a huge problem. <laughs> if you are not a seasoned performer, good luck. Because yeah. <laughs> it's not easy to create your own music. And your own material yeah for an existing character yeah um, don't stress yourselves out um it, it's also a really small part of the grade and that, oh, it's that's so tiny a, it's like 15 percent, i think yeah i think um if you can make up the points in all in all the other areas then you're probably good yeah probably yeah. That's- well and walk-ons count towards that 15 percent too yes. as a performance oh, element yes so Oh, well, yes. that's good. So a really I, I amazing like walk-on is going to score well in that. <laughs> okay, good. Well, that's in my good. experience with masquerades, I almost wish that they all did that, where you could give a score for a walk-on and a performance, because I've had some walk-ons be better than all the performances combined. Yeah. At a convention. Yeah. So like, yep. I kind of wish it was, we, we've done a couple where they've, they've rolled it all together. Um, so then in some cases, we were able to give performance awards to a walk-on. You know, in the case of Crown, and like we've been talking with everything else, if you can't do it well, and it's not required, just don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that that's probably a, a good rule of thumb for that then. Don't stress yourselves out, because my understanding is Crown is stressful enough. I'm sure Brittany yeah. can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a, as a competitor, it's, I know it's going to be different this year, which is the only kind of crappy thing, because we don't have internationals here anymore, but. It is the best competition. It is the best. I love competing in it. It's so fun. You meet so many cool people. The best people of the best people are there. Like even just in the locals, like you are going to have a great time competing there. I recommend it to literally anybody who wants to try out for it. It is so great in my opinion. And we're just going to keep throwing our hats in the ring till one day we get in. We'll just see. (laughs) <laughs> have you, how happen. many times have you how many times have you applied I've only applied once and I knew I wasn't going to get in because I wasn't done I just did okay. it to do it because if you don't do it then you have zero chance yes exactly so, exactly I really on, really think know. that you would love competing in it it's so fun being able to do that and honestly you feel like a freaking celebrity all day <laughs> like being in those costumes it, 
it's because the crowns are happening there. Like yeah. people know the crowns are happening there and the crowds are there and they're so excited to see these people in the best costumes, almost like in the country, you know? Yeah. Um, and it is just like so awesome. Well, and especially with um, Chicago keeping the U.S. finals, at least, you're yeah. still going to see that. I, I really think that there's at least, at the very least, there's still going to be that same high competitiveness at Chicago, which is great. It really does suck that we lost international. And you know what? Maybe we'll get it back in the future. Yeah. I, I hope we do, because that was the best part. I've met so many cool international people because of it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's still a great show to compete at. Although you probably don't see this much at a contest like Crown, there are some pretty wild things that contestants sometimes do that both are pet peeves of judges or are just wild and confusing. <laughs> and we've had so many. I have at other competitions, which I will speak on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like you're not, these aren't things that you're typically going to see at a competition that's full of very experienced people like we've just had oh, some yeah. really interesting things occur in the name of like extra points we had somebody use interfacing on spandex fabric to make it stiffer for like a fitted suit for the sole purpose of just making it more difficult why did they make it out of spandex because they it's difficult. more difficult to sew that sounds awful Yes. Like, why would you ever <laughs> want to do that? Like, unless yes. that fabric is the fabric that you had to have. Yes. For what purpose? For what even purpose? It. They told us because it would make the costume more difficult. That's not good. <laughs> not yes. good so, thing. like, don't don't do that. You no, know, <laughs> adding like random pieces of embroidery to your armor. Simmer with the embroidery, friends. <laughs> It could make it good, but you it know, could. it could, it could, um, gotta use a, a, a good eye there. Right. <laughs> Most of the, th the horror stories that I have have to do with, uh, eh, more novice situations mm -hmm. where like lying about things. Those are yes. the, those are the best slash worst stories. Those are the yeah. best. We yeah. We had so many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i saw it more in like anime type stuff actually i don't know if they just think it's okay or something but we had somebody lie once about um doing they said that they had a it was like a roller tool with a design on it that they imprinted on their fabric and then they hand stitched it um like a little hand basic embroidery I'm like, mm, I'm pretty sure I have the stitch on my sewing machine at home. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> like, you could have just told me you sewed it. You didn't have to lie to me and tell, you, tell me that you did something the more difficult way. Yeah. Don't I, lie to your judges. Almost always when people lie to us. Well, okay. Almost always we know that you're lying or we know something's fishy. But yes. when novices specifically lie about things. I just don't see the point in them doing that because we're definitely going to know, <laughs> definitely going to know. It's almost always in the novice category too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. A couple of times uh, I had people say that they made things that they didn't like. There was this one girl at a convention who I don't remember what the costume was, but she'd made her top and it was very obvious that she had made it. And then she had this perfectly fit and pressed absolutely perfect like lab coat mm -hmm. and I was just like she sewed this hmm okay so one of my other judges knowing because we all knew that she was lying walks behind the person and just is like it's okay if I touch this and she's like oh yeah definitely touch it and uh lifts the collar back and sees that there's a freaking tag on it yep. then also walks around to the front and then uh, lifts up the hems and sees that there's two buttons sewn in the bottom of the hem. It's beautiful. We've had that too. It was a yeah. vest specifically, not a that they claim to have made out of their grandmother's couch cushions. Oh well, you know that could be true if it were yeah. true. <laughs> if it were true, and I, I could, true. but you could see the stitching on the back of the vest where the tag was sewn in. Oh God, <laughs> honey, but don't do it. Same situation though, like this one piece was so drastically different in quality than the entire rest of the costume mm -hmm. 
we will know novices we will know um there was another time where there was this guy who had a resident evil costume and he was telling us how he made it and this that and the other and he's like oh yeah this part i sewed this on it was very obviously an ironed on patch or an ironed on vinyl decal that was like kind of coming up he's like oh yeah i sewed that on there and i'm just like honey no and i looked up this costume on ebay and i found this exact same ebay spirit halloween looking <laughs> costume and i'm just like no just don't lie to us we know we know we how know. to do these things we're not you're not getting anything past this right now <laughs> don't tell me that you 3d printed or don't tell me that you um carved something out of wood and spent a lot of time shopping for materials at the <laughs> hardware store when i can see the 3d print lines don't no tell way. me you made something if you didn't even bother to sand off the made in China. No, oh my God. <laughs> One of, oh, as far as just pet peeves go with making as just mm-hmm. not, not even just like buying your own, buying stuff from somebody else or whatever, uh, is 3D print lines. They get me every time. That That's one of those things. If I see 3D print lines under your paint job, I'm just like, no. And I know a lot of judges who feel the exact same way. So try to get those out of there. If you're going to use 3d prints, I think one of my big ones is uh, like un- completely unfinished seams. Oh yeah. Well, like, unless they're supposed to be that way, because right. weathering. but like, yes, fabric fraying away, completely unfinished, like no attempt to finish them. Hot mess express on the inside. Oh yeah. Things that are not fitted when, oh no. Okay. One that I really hate is when people don't clip curves. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? So uh-huh. I see somebody do like a shoe cover and it's got like that bunched up look on it just because they didn't cut the curve. Like if you don't know what clipping your curve is, please look that up on <laughs> online because it is so important that you do it and it makes things look so much better. So much better. <laughs> Huge pet peeve. And, and I bet that that's good. one that a lot of the novices don't even realize. No, they don't even know what that is. They're like, this is how it's sewn. And then they don't understand that there's that one extra step. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, it's so important. Got any more you're thinking of? Um, I mean, my big one is the lying. It always has been like, that's oh yeah. My oh, yeah. huge contest pet peeve is, I mean, I mm-hmm. also don't like the contestants that are really rude to you, which. Oh yeah. We get like they're late and they're demanding and or entitled I'm like I don't or they yeah they walk in and they assume they're winning (laughs) they're very like high and mighty and just like rude about it and like I get that I can't count that against your score or anything but like but you want to (laughs) but But it gives you sweet satisfaction when those people have like major flaws like the fact that they attached something like super last minute to their costume and didn't do any finishing so they're like oh look raw edges oh I guess you're not winning your categories <laughs> I mean we've had to give awards to these people every once in a while but nine times oh, out yeah. of ten they can't they talk but they cannot do the walk like mm-hmm. they definitely don't make things as well as they think they do yeah but, but I can't tell you how many times I've had people be late for their judging appointments by like hours and then demand that we judge them (laughs) and I'm like that's not how this works you miss your judging appointment if we have time left at the end you can get judged but it's like really we've even even rescheduled them before yeah Mm -hmm. I don't ever have to deal with people who are I don't know I don't feel like I don't usually deal with people like that but you guys also work a different circuit than I do so our I, crowds, usually people are like I'm so sorry I just I couldn't yeah. I'm so sorry I just <laughs> and I'm like it's okay we'll figure it out like well I'm sure we, we've got a slot we can do <laughs> I think a lot of times our contests are dealing with a lot of people that have a lot less experience in life in general um they uh-huh. tend to be kind of on the young side so yeah. sometimes it's more that just not really understanding how things work yeah, um, hope it works. The sense of entitlement tends to be a little bit higher in the anime con circuit, whether Sounds you feel like, like you you are owed by that convention because you win there frequently, or you know, this is my territory, not your territory. And like that's weird. That, I don't yeah, like it that. is. It's really strange, but it happens. Um that's that's too bad. 
That's too yeah. bad because I, my experience with a lot of like craftsmanship competitions specifically is that people are always super cool. And usually they're always like willing to talk to each other about like techniques and like, you know, not gatekeeping or anything like that. And people, you make good friends from like these craftsmanship competitions because you, you immediately have something in common with the person next to you, you know? Yeah. That's what I love so, about green rooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. I, I really, really like craftsmanship competitions because I do have so much in common with those people right out the gate. Speaking of contests, as we get close to wrapping this up here, um, I think our listeners would love to know what your top five tips are for entering a contest, especially if you're just starting to figure this out. Um, like just starting doing competitions? Yes. Like if you're just starting, like what's your your top tips for getting, getting started into contests? Uh, for sure. Find something that, uh, picking a costume that you love and you know that you can, um, you can do well. That's one. <laughs> <laughs> I would do research on competitions first, figure out what competition has what you want. If you want a lot of prejudging to make sure that a judge actually gets to see what you put you know, put into your costume, I would make sure you know that whatever competition you're doing has that. Um, so do research on your competitions. You have to have fun, you know, like you've got to have fun with it. If you take it entirely too seriously, I have to win. I have to go and I have to win. I have to place. It, it's not as fun. And having high expectations for your first time competing or competing in general, you're really just setting yourself up, yourself up for disappointment most of the time. Talk to people. Talk to the people around you at, uh, at, you know, around prejudging, you know, other, the other people in the costumes that, you know, you're competing with, like all those people don't, don't treat them like they're your competitors, treat them like they're people that are like-minded, cool people that, you know, they're possible friends, dude. Like those are all possible friends. I can't tell you how many people that I know now that I've met through competitions and we have so much in common just because, you know, we compete in competitions and we're all competitive. I already said the have fun one. That's usually what people end on. <laughs> if you like, if you like competitions and you like competing after you've, you've done it, keep doing it. Keep doing it. If you like it, like keep letting it be something that is fun for you. And when it's not fun anymore, don't do it anymore. That, that's about all I have to say about it. <laughs> that's probably some of the best advice is if it stops being fun, then you may need to take a break. Yeah, it's not it's might it not anymore. be for you. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. It just might not be might not be the thing. But if, if you're having fun with it, do it, you know. Do you have anything you want to share with our listeners who are at that more master level? I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want to hear. I am so competitive when it comes to cosplay competitions, like and not in a mal malicious way at all. I just seriously love competing and I know so many people who are so much better than me and I just keep trying with every fiber of my being to uh, to beat them <laughs> I try <laughs> I love you guys you're the reason that I do this you're the reason that I want to be better and we kind of hold ourselves together like to the standard of trying to be better than the next person and not in a bad way in a good way like we're we're helping each other be better so that's what I have to say. Yeah. Friendly yeah. competition. Yes, absolutely. You want to learn from the people you're competing with. You want to oh, have absolutely. a positive experience. I'd say that craftsmanship cons cosplay competitions in general in the U.S. are very positive. I, I would say like, especially at like these, at the competitions that I've done and I've like done my research on that I like to be a part of like people are so chill they're so cool about talking about their costumes they're almost never like mean about it they're just always cool with like sharing their secrets and talking to each other about you know how you're going to make things better and do cool things and what they're going to do in the future and all of that and those are the kind of people you want to be associated with not any of that toxic cosplay crowd you don't want to be a part of any of that so I'm the the craftsmanship cosplay crowd is a, is a very positive crowd in my experience well, hopefully um, you'll get to join that very positive crowd in August. Mm, that would be sweet. <laughs> we can watch you from our hotel room like we did last, this past C2. <laughs> did you? <laughs> we did. We didn't want to go down. So we, we bought the like virtual ticket and watched it. 
Aww. From our rooms. Yeah. yeah. We hooked it up to the TV and yeah. <laughs> hung out. Oh, that's so cool. Got I'm still out. I'm still trying to figure out if I want to do crowns or if I want to do TwitchCon. I'm kind Ooh. of like Ooh. I'm torn because there's they're both so good. Decisions, decisions. Yeah. And I really, really want that TwitchCon trophy. I just, I just want it. <laughs> Does one happen like significantly before the other or are they really close no together? they're like same time of the year yeah of course so, so I, it's not I like could you decide. could do the one and then enter the other one if the one didn't work out like well I almost guaranteed I think I will at least place somewhere in the first one and mm-hmm. I don't I won't bring a costume to another competition well I don't even know if you're allowed to do that for those anyway but I you're won't probably bring not allowed yeah I so like if I got like third place or something I wouldn't be able to bring it so yeah I only want to bring it to whichever one I win in because I am going for the gold this time. <laughs> I mean, I think we always are, but I'm, I'm going for it. So I got to be careful about which one I choose. And that's, that's also one of the hard things about doing these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you, you got to look at that trajectory sometimes? Yeah. Would you well, take the same a... costume? Yes. They're both, both competitions are perfect for the costume. That's the thing. And it's really hard choosing those big world costumes. So um it might just be I'll timing <laughs> this year if I had two costumes to bring honestly the costume memory the breath of the wild costume if I don't do twitch or if I don't do crowns I might just bring that one just so that I can compete because I just love competing at that competition like it doesn't even matter to me if I go in to try to win I mm-hmm. just want to be there so I might do that and then bring my big costume to TwitchCon. but I'm still really undecided I, I don't know they're both good <laughs> Well, good thing you have time to make that I, decision. I have some time to think about it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you will be reunited with one of your large craftsmanship contests in 2020. Oh, I will be for sure. So, I don't think COVID's getting any worse. So I think we're going to be okay. No, I think, I think hopefully we're on the, the way down and we're on the downswing. Good. We're, we're so, good. You know? Yeah. Thank you so much for chatting with us on this topic. This has been excellent. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I loved it. We're very happy to have you, you here. Um, Brittany, where can our listeners find you? Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, the Twitter thing that people care about, I guess, um, <laughs> as a Gnosis costuming on all of those. We will put that in the show notes as well for both part one and part two. So you will be able to find Brittany if you aren't already following her, which you should be. Um, Thank you. <laughs> see all the amazing prop work and costumes and paint. So much paint. I love the side-by-sides that you do where you have uh, the paint jobs on the black background and then you post the, mm-hmm. the, the graphic from the game right next to it. And you're like, yeah. which one's which? Yeah, I love it. I usually can't tell the difference. I'm like, oh no, which one is which one? I don't know. <laughs> They're so cool. All right. Well, that is all, right. all we have on this topic yes. for today. Thanks again for joining us. And thank you, friends, for tuning in and listening to us. You get a whole month of Ganoza. Woo! <laughs> again, I'm Ash. I'm Al. We are Lovey Cosplay. And this is Shit Cosplayers Say. You've been listening to Shit Cosplayers Say, an LVC production. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Podcast SCS. Our website is lavicosplay.com. Have a fun, crazy con or cosplay-related story, absurd cosplay question, or just something in general to share with us? Email us at podcastscs at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and remember, just because you can, doesn't mean you should.